Hello, good evening, and welcome to this round table, Building Future of Work with New Age Automated Digital Travel Systems, brought to you by the Economic Times HR World and Etilight. I'm Pooja Bothra, Associate Editor at Economic Times HR World and your host for this session. Before I bring the speakers, I'll take a minute or two to set the context for today's round table. After two exhausting years of working through airwaves, a massive dryness appears in interactions amongst the stakeholders. To overhaul this, employers are encouraging the workforce to travel, lubricating connections and triggering the much sought after adrenaline associated with being in new places and meeting new folks. Since travel management is critical for cost optimization, governance, and meeting safety requirements of the key asset of an organization, policymakers are reimagining and rewriting experiences for all business travelers. Digital tools capable of automating mundane manual processes have made travel processing simple, fast, and paperless, reducing the bandwidth of the procurement teams and the travelers. From directly impacting the PNL to boosting the willingness to set voyage, a very fine needle moves to proliferating psychological safety for travelers. In this round table, we are joined by a diverse set of speakers who will highlight the multi-pronged benefit of a digitalized travel management system on innovation, growth, insightful data, and talent empowerment. Without much ado, I'd like to now bring in the speakers for this roundtable. We have with us Surendra Singh Bish, Director of Facilities and Infrastructure, PhonePay Private Limited, Amit Khanna, AVP Facilities, Business and Commercials, TIL, Alok Shopurkar, EVP Head HR, HDFC Asset Management, and Farid Manan, VP Sales and Customer Service Success, APAC Etalite. Thank you for joining in uh, for this roundtable speakers. I'd also take a minute to welcome the viewers. Viewers, thanks for joining us at this roundtable. We want to make the session very interactive for you. So please use the Q&A tab on your screen to share your questions. Um, the panel will be taking your questions right from the beginning of the session. So uh, please uh, put in your questions um, uh, for the panel. Um, let's start uh, with you, Surendra. I'd like to ask you, what are the pain points in your current travel management system? How do they act as a roadblock to employees' interest in making trips? Hi, good evening, everyone. Uh, this is Surendra Best. Uh, you know, when we talk about travel management, uh, the biggest pain area is uh, the to and fro mail exchange from employee to the travel desk. And in case if we are uh, working in a system where approval is required, mail mails going for approval to the manager, managers taking time. And nowadays, uh, with the airline industries, uh, you know you cannot hold the tickets, uh, you cannot block the tickets uh, for a longer period. So by the time you get approval, the cost uh, goes high again. It goes into the approval cycle. So too much of hassles uh, is there for an employee to block it book it and travel safely that's that's the air side apart from that when you talk about the travel uh, management uh, in in a you know in a corporate setup you are not only looking at uh, airline tickets you are also looking at the hotel booking you are also looking at the uh, taxi services plus uh, there are areas which are which is not frequently traveled by the people and with startups coming up you have a lot of young crowd which is joining and there could be many, many, many travelers would be, you know, traveling for the first time for a, for a corporate meetings and stuff. So too much of uh, manual intervention uh, uh, during uh, for the booking of uh, air, air tickets, travel. And when you come back, you have to do a expense management within a time frame. So it creates a lot of problem uh, for, for an uh, employee to ensure his travel is complete right from booking to expense uh, management at a shorter interval. So digitization is another uh, way of looking at it. Uh, so we have been able to digitize a lot of travel, uh, you know, but it's only to the airline industry. When it comes to travel and expense management together, either when you do an end-to-end -end management, the cost is very high. 
so companies really suffer or you have a travel uh, team which is very big and again there are a lot of malnutrition which takes place so these are the pain areas and in today's uh, discussion i think uh, we are targeting uh, the digital disruption which is uh, you know coming in into the travel management let's see how it is going to help all of us manage that uh, problem uh, thank you surendra for your insights um, uh, alok what are your thoughts on this okay good evening everyone thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to express my views on the subject so see what as practicing manager we are experiencing that the configuration of workforce is changing one side you have young dynamic energetic people who are creating a lot of economic value for enterprises whether they are from the field of finance digital technology and they are into their own world they are thinking simultaneously multiple things highly agile cutting edge one side second side you have people who are in the middle age and third is of course you have the senior people who exit now how your travel system offers the opportunity to schedule the travel in a seamless manner and ensure that people are productive and not worried about logistics or fighting with the travel agent airport check check in check outs last minute compliance requirements for example recently we said you required covid doses then they came the booster doses required suddenly some countries have removed the booster dose so how do you inform your traveling executives who are 24 hours on the move with the latest developments you feed in the system and they are uh, you know those systems are available on real time basis so this also helps you to do the real time basis scheduling and uh, improving the productivity and obviously keep them worry free hassle free so these are some of our thoughts i uh, thought i'll express in this forum to start with uh, thank you alok and uh, you know alok you rightly pointed out the generational demographic in an organization currently so you know there are like uh, different generations and their ask is so different uh, so probably a digital system in place can take care of everyone's needs uh, you know maybe for the younger generation it could be extremely fast booking because they are so agile for an older generation they would like to have things in place you know like when you talk about governance uh, they don't want last minute uh, you know uh, surprises with respect to what is required for travel so um, very valid point there so puja uh, i may sound somebody who likes to hear his own voice but i thought one more relevant point i will express here is that not having digital system today or not having automation or technology cutting edge technology at workplace is also going to impact your employer score hmm just imagine one side you have cutting edge digital app based real time touch screen system the other side let's say you have a computerized manual system i'm not going to the typewriter era but let's say reasonable computerized man where would you likely to attract talent where would I, are you likely to create employee experience that seamless reduce those wasteful activity and therefore i thought this would be prudent it would be prudent for organizations to look and create an employee experience to ensure the consistency accuracy and seamless travel free operation very valid um, point alok and we will talk about it in details you know good that you mentioned it but we will talk about it in details that how having a digital uh, travel management system also helps talent attraction retention and experience and like you mentioned it is very important for your nps as well uh, amit i'd like to bring you in and ask you uh, about you know the digitalized uh, system that we have in place at til uh, when was that adapted uh, and uh, what has the experience been so far for the employees hi good evening amit here thanks for me having me on the board and pardon me a little bit of background noise but please bear me with that for that see til or at the group level when we say bennett we adopted the digital system which actually even though alok mentioned a little bit old era kind of a thing which is computer operated it has to go on somebody has to go back on the screen but the system was adopted around 7 to 8 years back when we are 
early movers into the whole thing and we moved into a digital system which was integrated with the ERP structure we had as well as financial systems. So practically when the implementation happened, the initial few days, it was a little bit challenging because adoption, etc. were a point of concern and people need to get trained around it. But when it happened, it was much more easier because with approvals happening and reservations which actually could have taken place off the fly, a lot of cost savings to happen in that case, which also helped us to basically somewhere make improvement in what we were able to deliver and customer satisfaction. People were able to reserve and uh, make out bookings for you, whether it was airlines was concerned, hotels, and even cab services. Even though the environment around that point of time was not that mature, but with the time being and over the time, the period, the system has matured enough to deliver what was expected out of it. But with true scenario, with I agree with Alok as well. We are looking for actually for the new Gen Z scenarios where people are looking at things which actually are adaptable and specifically available on the handset itself or where they can actually be accessible from anywhere, anytime. So that is, I think, the roadmap going forward, which everyone is looking at adopting. Things which are available in B2C models and where consumers are directly having it on the phone itself. That is something which actually is expected to be delivered in the B2B space as well. Um, thank you, Amit, for sharing that. Um, you know, uh, over the course of this discussion, we will take in more details from you regarding, you know, how to train uh, the employees and the end users uh, to use the digital system. I'd like to get Farid in at this point of time. And Farid, uh, something that Surendra said also kind of, uh, you know, wants me to ask you to give your input that, you know, sometimes some of the organizations cannot implement an end-to-end -end digital system for travel because it's very expensive. So some of them also do go for partly uh, automated system and partly manual system. So I would like to ask you is that, um, is it possible to have a piecemeal system with a digital travel uh, management uh, tool? And uh, how, uh, how have you been able to overhaul uh, that through an end-to-end -end automated system, the challenges. I mean, first of all, uh, good evening to everyone. Um, and uh, thank you for having me. I'll probably address this into two parts. Uh, you spoke about, uh, and I heard that uh, across one is on the manual process and on the piecemeal process. I think the manual process, the biggest challenge is on the efficiency. Right? Uh, multiple things, right? If I could imagine... Sometimes uh, people would, uh, from manual way, you email is your best friend that you would send it across and you probably give a date um, that you want to travel, location you want to travel and you want to ask for a hotel. A lot of things gets lost in communication. For example, is that a morning flight? Is that an evening flight? Is that an afternoon flight? It goes too much of to and fro that happens, right? Uh, it even sometimes is a language barrier as well, right? That you would have uh, if you were to pick up the phone and talk uh, onto it. We have seen also challenges where when you grow as an organization, you also need to be in multi-region and even a 24 bar seven perspective, right? Those are, the, those are today's challenges when, uh, which is happening from a manual process. When you spoke about a piecemeal, yes, there are piecemeal digitized options which are there, right? And essentially uh, three parts which get mostly used, which is your flights, hotels, and cabs. Now, I think people have adopted, I think flights is something that most people have probably adopted on the digital side of things. Now, what happens when you have multiple digitized uh, options is that you're also speaking to multiple vendors as well. You need to manage them as well. And even a small example, if I were to give, like you want to change your flight uh, or you're changing your travel dates. Imagine you have to go into three different places and uh, so you need to look for a platform, which is, A, you want a single vendor who would do this. You want to also have a platform which is going to be cutting across all of them, right? Which is both on a flight, hotel, and on, on a cab booking. You want that on a real time, right? I think uh, Surindra spoke about approvals, how long it takes, and it goes. Probably you need a, a system which could do things in, in, in under two minutes that you could have a booking, including your approval. Policy is completely fed in. So uh, people which are they're choosing in should be aligned with the company policy, uh, a prompt for an approval process, or even uh, uh, build a travel plan or a travel uh, policy, which will 
have the intelligence to know what is the average cost of flight, which is there between two locations. That's how you achieve from a digitized process. And those are some of the things that we are doing. Um, thank you, Farid, for that. Um, Alok, I'd like to ask you, based on your experience as a HR head, what, what generally are the roadblocks in digitalizing processes? In this case, we're talking about travel management system. Uh, you can use that as an example. Also, uh, what are the major concern or, uh, you know, uh, let's say roadblocks in digitalizing processes? See, principally, if you ask me, you ask any uh, organization, finally, you have to fund a project, right? So do you have commitment for employee experience? Okay. Or you want to make uh, ease of doing business in internal sense. Okay. Uh, is it is it a problem size enough for you to create? For example, if you are a small organization, five, 10 people traveling. I mean, is there a common platform available through a general app you can leverage or you really would like to buy for your own organization? Next is also the person who is leading this function. Is he or she recommending this? Do they feel need? And obviously there's a normal resistance to change. How will it happen? People also psychologically, they fear the loss of control because then, you know, it, everything is happening online. So these are some of the things and of course, cost and commitment is something which, uh, you know, will be required then are there challenges uh, with respect to integrating your this travel management system with your other internal system if you have some enterprise uh, systems will it get maybe hr system or expense reimbursement system so all those things come to me you know as a normal resistance but uh, one thing i am seeing there is a major shift and the digital is something which stays through much easily and there are long term benefit uh, and the cost advantage, then you can also retrieve a lot of data, analytics can happen. So uh, principally, I really don't see a worry unless there are some economics or com commercial factors, let me put it this way. And obviously the incumbent who is driving this, is he willing to take that change? Yeah, I was also coming to that, that, you know, sometimes uh, leaders at the top may be a little resistant to change because they feel some of them are not that technologically savvy themselves. So uh, in that case, also change management is also a concern in many organizations. And uh, you brought about, uh, you know, points like data and analytics. We will cover this uh, in the other part of the session today. Um, Amit, I'd like to ask you is that because you have kind of in a way historically running a digital uh, travel system, like you said, you know, you implemented uh, one by six to seven years back. So uh, from then to now, what are those challenges you've been able to solve with the help of the digital travel system? I think one of the major challenge which we were able to get an output of after implementing this new system was it was basically time for approvals. Earlier it used to be emails which used to flow across and through hierarchies and that was something which which we were able to pass through and as soon as approvals happened people were able to capture in and get the appropriate flight tickets hotels guest house reservations done accordingly and they were able to optimize on availability of inventory that was the key benefit which we were able to do it second was actually as alok also mentioned we were able to get out more data basis which we were actually able to identify what was going right what was going wrong and if there was something appropriate in, in, intervention which had to be taken at that point of time to improvise or rectify what if somebody was playing around with the environment. So that were a couple of things which we actually were able to optimize and there were multiple other benefits that including integration with the other systems including the HRMS as well as the reimbursement system into the HR system as well as well as financial systems for the payouts and salary structures that also happened. So a lot of things actually got converted and you always didn't went, need to always go back and submit, carry out physical copies and submit, move across for getting approvals on the tables across. That was something which actually people were quite happy to adopt. But true, there were resistance earlier. A lot of people were not happy and they had to be basically a little bit pushed back and trained to go back and adopt to the new system. But when, when they actually were able to understand and get benefits out of it, it was easy sail through. Interesting. 
Uh, Surendra, you started this session with a very powerful opening statement regarding the pain points of, you know, travel management. I'd like to ask you, um, you know, if you were to digitalize your uh, travel management system in your organization, what would be those uh, points you would first want to, uh, you know, keep in uh, mind before deciding on the a service provider or however you want to go uh, uh, about it so uh, you know um, i would look at from a two uh, two angle one is the traveler who is going to book the tickets and another is a, a service provider who is going to give me the platform and the kind of people uh, who would be running uh, the show for us one is uh, when the traveler is trying to book a ticket he needs ease of uh, booking so you know uh, the, the biggest challenge we face in a digitized world is uh, too many sign on, too many passwords, uh, then, you know, jumping from one screen to another. And we, we, we always forget when we do a digitalization uh, disruption in, in any of the processes, 80% uh, of the staff would like to do it on mobile. So today I'm traveling and I have to take this call on the way. Is it going to work? One, the internet speed across the country where I'm, I would be traveling, the kind of business I would be in, I may be traveling to the domestic sector, which is a remote area in the uh, country where the internet access will not be there, uh, is it going to help me uh, or, or my traveler to do all kind of booking, cancellation, rebooking and taking approvals and stuff. So uh, Alok just mentioned that we need to really look at the, the kind of travelers we would have and we, 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 we should be able to, you know, uh, bring in a policy which really talks about uh, some travelers uh, who, who have to travel at a last minute thing, do we really need to have an approval in place? And historically, I have been managing this travel since last 26 years. I have not seen, uh, barring two or three percent cases, where managers would have disapproved the travel. Every time, it will always be approved. So you know, the historical data says uh, that since the manager is not disapproving the travel, do we really need an approval mechanism in place? And why do we need that? So nobody has thought about it. I don't know, but uh, wherever I've been into in the industry, I've always debated this. Why do we need travel? Because anytime the travel is happening, people might be talking to the manager and they are doing the travel. And then we do a after audit thing. And and, and coming to the service provider side, yes, we may have a lot of travel agent uh, who will come back and give us a good presentation. By the time you are trying to implement it, you will find that three people from that project team would have left and they would have joined the other organization. So it, it's again, every time you are reinventing the wheel, reinventing the wheel, reinventing the wheel. And once it, it gets uh, disrupted uh, while uh, during the implementation, uh, the, the com comfortness or, or the confidence, uh, the management and the employee who are putting on you that when you announce that we are going to digitalize and it takes a lot of time, people come back and they say, why are we wasting time? Can't we go back to the uh, old system where you do just do a send a mail and everything is taken care. So, so service provider also uh, really, uh, and you know, thanks to Etilite, uh, I've been in touch with them. I've been talking to them about uh, the kind of disruption they are going to bring in onto the table. So right from booking a travel ticket to your expense management, and also the important factor is uh, if, if your department is overshooting a budget of, uh, you know, travel within the three months period, if your budget was assigned to X amount of money, you know, uh, auto mail, which would go back to the business finance saying that you're team has already exceeded the budget or they are going to exceed the budget. Do you want to increase the budget or do you want to stop there uh, for the booking? So, you know, instead of doing post-mortem uh, after the accident has happened, they are trying to actually uh, bring in uh, many uh, means and ways to avoid that accident. So no approval system, your uh, budget uh, pre-approval will happen. You will get an auto alert uh, if you are exceeding your budget. When you come back, it's a one touch button where you uh, where you can actually do your expense management and for the finance team also. So when I am uh, working on it, uh, so our team is working on digitalizing the travel uh, management of, of our company. Uh, we have actually involved uh, the HR operation team, the finance team, uh, the travel team, uh, the purchase team. So all are together at, on one table. We are actually, uh, you know, discussing, debating on the means and modes, what, we, what is required, uh, nice to have and need to have. So there could be certain uh, points which would be nice to have and there are certain things which are need to have so there is no discussion happening on that this is something which we need and when with with our experience with the pain areas what we have got from the traveler we are trying to put in 
and we are asking uh, you know our vendors to also customize uh, it uh, the way we want our travel to happen um very interesting points surendra from you and i totally agree that you know one big advantage i see with the end to end digital system is that you know it will not work in silos uh, because travel management is something which kind of aligns even with finance even with hr even with other domains so uh, it's going to be a system where anybody can access any information all the senior leaders can get a complete picture of uh, you know what's happening um, uh with the finance thing the budgeting and the you know business outcome you're generating from those travels um i'll take a audience question here um uh, anand is asking that sometimes for audit purposes you need physical bills of hotels uh, taxis airline tickets etc so with digital system how does one deal with those kind of requirements so see uh, today i also travel and nowadays all the good hotels at least where i have i am staying not because of my pocket but thanks to company all those uh, bills directly come to email and you can upload in the system okay so uh, all those uploadings are there because see today gst etc all are now streamlined so if there is see you are worried about the income tax at the end of the day you don't want a violation you don't want you have not traveled but you are showing expenses so uh, today i think if you upload uh, on the system and uh, either you take a scan copy and upload or you can directly upload uh, receive so that is acceptable at least in our organization we are not asking for physical copy amit your thoughts on that yes but uh, truly in basically organization which are little native and established long period time ago requirement of physical documents to the in today scenario also remain a challenge you will have to basically somewhere at a point of time when finance is looking at audits and not looking at documentation they ask for physical document and sometimes you need to submit it across but in most of the cases we are trying to migrate to digital pieces a lot of things have happened but still it is in the pipeline so i will say no we are not fully on that mode yes we can totally rely on totally digital uploads or kind of available email inputs because as alok pointed out or as as per the environment across if you look at larger enterprise hotels or a great chains which actually are able to give you digital aspects of finance invoices etc when when you look at down the line in the lower grade segment or basically entry level employees their uh, approval limits etc for hotels are actually very limited and in that case normally what they get is physical bills which have to somehow basically get reached back to finance for payouts or to the hr for operational payouts structures and that is where also you actually have leakage it like gst etc happening so so that is one of the major reason practically people look out for and ask for documents and original documents to be attached so that they are very sure what expense has been incurred is being paid interesting thank you amit uh farid i'd like to uh, get you in now uh, once more and you know like uh, surendra mentioned that it light is disrupting uh, the way travel business travel is managed in organizations uh, to that point i'd like to ask you is that how does your travel tool help to check the following boxes one is the sustainability agenda in organizations greater experience for generation z psychological safety and also governance I told you I missed I missed on answering uh, a part of the question you had asked earlier. So maybe I'll start with that. You had you had asked about how difficult is it or how expensive is it uh, to implement a digital uh, you know digitize the process. Um, as per my understanding and and the way I understand it, most organization probably spend about one to two percent of the overall cost on on um, running. Uh, a travel uh, team right in that perspective if i look at it from a digitized perspective it's pretty much similar it might be 2 to 3 percent maybe a marginal probably an increase of or at most times even the same right what it does is collective saving on many other things that we don't quantify right which is i think surendra spoke a bit about it and i think alok also spoke about it as well as like in in terms of how do we understand um the people are traveling within their policies right are they adhering to it right uh, how do we know that 
we also spoke about, I think, interesting point you made is uh, very true. I mean, having been uh, uh, approving manager, do I ever reject a travel? Actually, I don't, right? Great point, right? Do we need approvals? So if you really look at it, there are a couple of things which happens. One is um, a trip approval. Are you, yes, are you allowed to travel or not? Then is a cost approval. Is that cost aligned with uh, the policy, right? Now, if both of them uh, you can do away with or just do with a trip approval, just trip approval, as long as within policy, you don't need any further approvals, that speeds up the process, right? Um, sometimes the delays happen, you're waiting for approval process, right, in that context. So we understand different companies have different needs. I think one is catering to them and, and doing that. Now, I'll quickly move into uh, probably a Gen Z scenario, right? Today, Gen Z, if you were to ask them, they probably would say that, uh, I want to speak into Alexa and tell that I want to travel from here to here and I want my tickets, right? It, they are um, they want everything instantaneously, right? So they want more control on it. So the current manual process is not something you want to cut with them. They want something which is available, choice they make. I think there's a study which talks about Gen Z, uh, for Gen Z, travel is a perk, right? They look at also when they travel to explore the city wanting to know the city. Sustainability is, is big in while they make those decisions, right? How do we as organization help them make that uh, decision? For them, the cause is more important. Uh, that's clear, I mean, dear to them. Uh, how I'm making, for example, if someone wants to travel from Bangalore to Chennai, right? Uh, it's probably better off to take a train than actually take a plane, both from a sustainability point of view, and which would sit well uh, with the Gen Z audience. So this is the decisions we help make people uh, on a carbon footprint, right? The biggest sustainability is a carbon footprint. 5% of air travel contributes to the greenhouse, right? Uh, interesting enough, uh, in that almost 25% contributes to business and first class travel. So how are we even making choices onto that? Do we need to even travel? Is that even important, right? Uh, so those are the things that we really help making. One is instantaneous decision decision that's available to them, options which is available to them uh, on a platform, on an app, like we, we spoke about how everything is done on an app. It's no longer even going to a browser on a on a laptop, right? So those are the things that we help making, we help making which planes are being used, what is the carbon footprint of it, right? How are you even offsetting? A lot of companies are investing in offsetting carbon footprint. Um, I'll just take one more audience question here. Niranjan is asking that... Um, you know, generally, uh, business travelers do not get correct feedback through online sources. So if you're looking for a hotel booking, or if you're looking for some kind of a review on travel, air travel, you don't get genuine feedbacks uh, or reviews. So does the digital travel tool that you have, does it have like some kind of uh, review and, you know, ratings? We call it a social cues, right? I mean, today, when we even go to Zomato, we look at uh, sorry, if you go to go to a, a restaurant to eat, we look at reviews before we go, right? And probably my my go to is the matter. Uh, so we we do two different things. Um, uh, one is that uh, we have uh, reviews from your colleagues, right? If one of the things that we do is people, your own colleagues from your own organization, what have they recommended, right? What are the hotels that they recommend? That's a cue that you would get one within your own organization. Two is uh, we actually the most uh, I would say non-biased, we believe, uh, is um, TripAdvisor, right? TripAdvisor is the most neutral platform where people go reviews from. Those are the reviews that we really pull in from all of them, right? So people have choices to make their decision based on reviews. We as an organization, what we do is we take NPS from every traveler who, who's made, who's traveled, right? And we are very, we look into anyone who's given a detractor, wanting to go understand and if you see many of them we do an independent audit and we even remove that property out of our platform um that's a very interesting point that you know you do independent audits so i think uh, you know that would really keep some quality in check um so moving on um i'd like to ask um, indra and alok uh, what policy change is needed 
at the top level, at the organizational level, to make uh, travel processes easy, flexible, fast, and efficient for the workforce. You know, one is having digital system in place, but we've also spoken about that. You know, are actually approvals uh, essential? So, if policies and organizations are made in such a way and they are so rock solid. then uh, probably a digital system will be more efficient and will give you more outcome uh, if policies are not in place and even a digital system will not be able to uh, you know give a result that is expected to give let let i mean okay let me start so see there are how a travel system governs who are the key players in this whole in the fray one is an employee of course grade wise entitlement and you know things uh then you have uh, technology right now where does the biggest gap come either you uh, cross your limits of entitlement you overspend travel upper class than what you are entitled to so more and le- more and more i am seeing organizations are now streamlining there are a lot of differentiation and grades in this thing generally now people are you know making it more uh, unless is somebody is very very senior nowadays i am seeing lot of people are traveling economy class okay and this is not uh, rather it is a matter of pride rather than you know saying that i will go by business class somebody will go by economy class if I, you ask me uh, if i am traveling for business and my team member is traveling i would prefer economy class i wouldn't like to you know have the two different class in the same carrier okay so uh, i think there is a some uh, i would say s- social orientation uh, among seniors also and that hierarchical um, alpha boss models are slowly doing away with so policies are also getting governed by what is happening in environment so as the entitlements so as the your reimbursements nowadays i am in mean, i as i see more and more organizations there is no da system okay all actuals your food your travel your stay everything is on actual and then you are not given per diem or something unless you are traveling international uh, uh, for a project base so uh, policies are more or less governed by those things so a lot of uh, improvisation is happening coming to travel alone policies organizations do benchmarking they see what similar organizations are doing and everybody tries to be in that range because you can't really offend your employees uh, much so that's the something and somebody has asked me a question in the uh, q and a this that uh, about what is hdfc doing so just wanted to respond because do not did not want that to go unanswered so hdfc has uh, two kind of arrangement one is we have tie up with almost all hotels across the country given our bandwidth and uh, you know uh, size and second thing is we have tie up we have a smart buy portal which is also available to credit card holders you can go online book and so same facilities available for employees also and third is we have tie up with portals like yatra and others uh, so you can go and do online so all these things backwardly integrated so make it reasonable seamless would we like to improve it further yes there is no end to it there is always space to improve but this is what we are doing which is fairly in the upper bracket i would say but yes the lot many things to improve further yeah thank you for taking that audience question alok uh, and i am a user of smart buy so you know for my family we always use that and the you know the best part is that you accumulate points uh which is uh, very uh, great um surendra your thoughts on this uh, you know why a policy changes much yeah because you know the historical data says uh, the compliance of any travel uh, uh, talk about any company and i have been talking to many travel agents everybody talks about that compliance level at all company is around 30 35% so seven days travel uh, doesn't happen uh, you know it is always at 3 uh, days or 4 days and you spend a uh, higher amount while booking the tickets 30 day t- days travel for international so you need to book before 30 days uh, there the compliance is uh, sitting at some uh, 50 55% so uh, 
so you know looking at the data when the compliances are not happening and and all these delays if you really look at the delays in international travel the delay is because of the approval which comes at a, uh, after five days seven days and uh, unfortunately we work for five days a week two days anyway uh, or saturday sunday so you can't force people to approve uh, and, and then you uh, waste you know for international travel you waste around eight days in those 25 or 30 days same is with the domestic thing and again the domestic travel when the travel is booked it goes for a taxi booking so when your travel is approved then your associated thing should always be approved that should be the part of policy so once my travel from bangalore to mumbai is approved my hotel should be approved my taxi should be approved uh, uh, you know with the disruption technology what is going to come now a lot of companies are adapting it uh, it light uh, would also throw lights on that uh, I, I i'm given a choice to book a, a hotel within a you know uh, in the same vicinity where my hotel is or where my office is so today with the technology i am able to look at various options of hotel available and from that i can book the important uh, you know important thing and then the biggest challenge we face uh, one is a female traveler are we booking them in a right hotel second how do i know that the hotel which i am booking uh, is, is the right hotel for the team that is something where uh, etlite needs to really work very very hard on uh, by taking inputs uh, from company like sdfc for, from company uh, which are bigger uh, in terms of travel volume uh, their review should be taken because uh, you know in today's world there are a lot of paid reviews also so hotels are paying to the outside world to give a good review so how do i rely on the review one good point farid mentioned was the review will be from my employee so now you need to educate your employee who are travel frequent travelers then when they come back from the travel they should actually put the right uh, review on on your own portal so that next time when uh, a new employee is booking who has not traveled much he can go on to that those reviews from 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 his own colleague and select the hotel so these things need to be uh, part of the policy then entitlement one thing alok mentioned uh, you know if if the entitlement so a lot of companies where i have worked in past uh, for a female traveler uh, automatically there uh, you know the hotel uh, entitlement is uh, any increased by one grade so that you know if somebody is entitled for a three star she gets into a four star automatically looking at the safety of the traveler and and, and the kind of uh, environment we stay in uh, last thing is all these approval hotel searching ticket booking taxi booking your associate vendors who are there on the ground unfortunately today also we are not uh, having good uh, taxi vendors on the ground even in metro cities where you can really rely on because you will get the booking confirmation everything and when you land at the airport you will find the driver is not there or, or the driver uh, who is supposed to come would have changed his duty and uh, sent the another driver so then you are calling your colleagues finding out the driver in the night you are uh, talking to your uh, you know in house travel uh, team or maybe uh, the the vendor partner and then you know doing all those things it, it, it's a bad experience for an employee so how we are going to sort that uh, is something where uh, etlite needs to really help us or, or our travel other travel partners make my trip yatra and everything needs to help last point i want to make uh, when it comes to my personal travel you know and puja you rightly mentioned that you also uh, look at the smart uh, way of uh, booking where you get a lot of discounts when it comes to my personal travel i go extra mile and do everything and uh, anything and everything but when it comes to an official uh, travel i don't want to take that extra mile extra step to ensure that i do everything uh, everyone wants the system should uh, work for him the policy should work for him the travel a uh, tool should work for him uh, the taxi vendor sh- uh, should uh, work in a in a very smart manner which unfortunately in today's world also uh, you know it, it, it's a pain area how we are going to sort it out is something which time will tell with the new taxi vendors coming in selection of right vendors uh, onto the panel of your panel, uh, team would really help uh, you know your uh, new employee who are traveling the first time traveler or the senior management who are traveling because their time is crucial they can't miss that time very interesting points um, you made sridra and i'd like to ask farid uh, how does etlite help with the last mile transport that is uh, to and fro from the airport which is actually a huge problem in india 
Yes, uh, I think unfortunately no one has a magic pill. Uh, that is something. So what what we have tried to do or what we're trying to solve for is um, probably reduce the instances that could happen. Right, it's very difficult today, uh, probably to say there is someone who's foolproof. Uh, one of the things that our learning experience has been that um, probably choosing a slightly premium mentor, right? And someone who probably charges uh, a premium or charges more than what probably not being competitive on a cost and paying a bit of a premium seems to be healthy. Right? So if um, um, most organizations are comfortable and they seem to be, right? It's It's about... Uh, employee safety and convenience uh, as well, right? You've seen that to work better. Again, is it foolproof? It's probably not. Uh, I've seen now a lot of organization and new companies which have coming up, which are trying to solve for it. Uh, we're also trying to partner. So most of them who are good at what they do, but they are not uh, digitally able, right? How do we partner with them? Where we provide them with technology? We provide them uh, from a tech perspective that we can integrate them with us to work with them. So we're slowly getting more partners in that aspect. Uh, today we work with some of the bigger um, partners that we would work with, where we clear that we understand and we, we take the same value proposition um, to to the companies that yes, we probably have to pay a premium, but that premium helps solve us. A lot of things, right? And I think more than that, it's a lot of ease, right? Uh, you know that on a single travel, right? People do um, flights, uh, hotel, and cabs. You want to have one place where you do all of them. You have one approval for your manager to approve all of them, and you want to have one confirmation in all of them, right? So that's that's how it will help us in in solving. I think there's maybe I want to just add uh, something that came up, right? We spoke mm-hmm. about a lot of policies that people have, right? And um, interestingly, when it's easy to define a policy for hotels, right? You say you, you're this level, you're allowed to travel in, in this cost. It's very difficult to define a policy for flights. How are you going to define like Bangalore to Delhi? If this is what um, you're entitled to based on this policy, and entitled to based on your position. Um, it doesn't work. But of course, you could just say some people are allowed to travel business class. Someone is tra- allowed to travel like economy. And this is where um, you need a partner or need someone who helps provide. And this is where digital really helps. I know the average cost that's there in the last one month, right? What has been the flight cost from a Bangalore to Delhi sector that has been there? That would be the policy that we could help provide organizations and how do you build your own travel policy, which could be very dynamic, which changes every month, which could change um, every quarter uh, in that perspective. We work with more than 300 companies, right? So we also spoke about how do we have collective knowledge of how other companies are doing, right? In in defining those um, employee policies, how friendly are there? What is other people doing? How are they solving the Gen Z? So that's something that, again, we help in solving. We provide that, and that's something is quite appreciated when uh, organizations do that. Um, I'd like to share a small uh, experience. Uh, so recently, we had to travel to uh, Bombay, and in Bombay, we were looking for a hotel in BKC. Uh, and uh, in BKC, there are two hotels which are like really, you know, luxury hotels, doesn't come fit our, uh, you know, travel budgets. And it was impossible to get hold of a decent medium hotels. So, you know, probably having a digital system in place would give you better options, you know, as to um, in these kind of locations. Um, Amit, I'd like to ask you is uh, what kind of uh, insightful data are you being able to mine to the digital travel system that you have and what kind of decisions it's helping you make for talent and business? Data which comes out of a digital system is more related to flights as well as your hotel stays and people how what is being consumed and what is not being consumed. What we are able to basically pick it out is that is the person with reservation basically using the system appropriately? Is somebody trying to misuse it? Is, are they trying to take any kind of advantage out of it? People tend to have that habit of booking last minute. So, so a lot of time when we actually look at it, there, there, is all, there is always an opportunity to basically make a reservation in time to basically get it at optimal most cost. 
So that is something which we normally used to track across. But with this COVID times happening and a lot of travel being put on hold, that is being as of now not being followed so rigorously. But that is something which are the major analytics which we are trying to evaluate, figure out. Another thing which I actually try to pull out is basically we as an organization also work on the model of guest houses which we own specifically and utilize. So practically, how we can actually optimize our own internal inventory versus what actually inventory is we take, getting utilized outside is also we keep track and analysis around it. So that is something we use the digital system for analysis and data tracking specifically purpose. Uh, Fareed, I'd like to ask you the same question. So, do you want to just uh, uh, tell me that again? Yeah, I'd just like to ask you what kind of data do one get from a digital travel uh, process and uh, what into what use can that da- data be? We had an interesting uh, analysis that we had to do and I'll probably talk with that and say what else we could do. Uh, there was an organization who was trying to understand um, uh, from a sales, the team that was sales team that were traveling. Is there a differentiation between someone who's traveling and doing in-person meetings versus someone who's doing digital meetings? Right? Um, though it's not, we would know from an end-to-end perspective, but we were able to like probably talk about how many times someone spent over a year, what was the travel that they have done, and is there a direct correlation into the efficiency uh, that they would bring? Right. Uh, this is what probably uh, an interesting thing that we did, but. Um, Apart from that, if I were to talk about from a straight jacket digital uh, perspective, right? And I think uh, Surinder also spoke about it is like one of the things that we do, or every organization does is sets budgets. Uh, sets budgets, um, uh, you know, based on teams, right? A lot of time it's not audited. A lot of times you don't even know where you are on it. And it's post that you get to know about it, right? It's a, you, I mean, it's a real time place where you would get exactly today, where are you versus that. Uh, it's not even that you need to wait for a certain time. Of course, we can trigger reports. Like if you're not expecting senior management to be looking at that uh, uh, on a uh, you know uh, on a daily basis, we can trigger reports based on that. Uh, we can do uh, in terms of what has been uh, travel experience, right? Based on NPS and each one of them, what has uh, something that has worked for people and not worked for them. I mean, there are multiple reports that we could we could even uh, pull in. Um, um, for example, in terms of who are your highest travelers, right? And what are they being, what has been the policy adherence, percentage of policy adherence that has happened, right? Which could be into days, it could be into segments while making those choices. How many of them has been manager approved, even though they were violation of it uh, in that perspective, right? So we can put in a lot of checks and balances, which can, which can come into place, right? We've We've got instances where Say, for example, based on if the policy is, it's outside policy, there could be a second layer of approval. Your, you know, maybe uh, a VP of the organization needs to do it. Probably some deterrent that forces you to be within uh, the policy that you're supposed to be into it, right? Um, so this happens only when, when information is available to you. You are able to make more informed decisions. Sarit, you forgot to mention uh, the missed savings. Unless and until you show the numbers, unless until you show the numbers to the CFO that this is the violation what your employees are doing because of non-compliance, uh, there is a huge missed savings which you could have got if people, uh, employees or travelers are disciplined and they are traveling in a right manner. The moment you hit with the numbers to the CA management, I think things start falling in place. And, and I, yeah. am, I am personally not a believer, firm believer of doing a post-mortem because you can generate n number of reports. A report goes into the analyst desk, he will do an analysis, a PPT will be made, one discussion will happen and then we will sleep on it for three months by the time you get the next report. Instead of doing a post-mortem, what I said in the beginning, can we build in a mechanism where uh, we, before doing this spend, we can alert uh, the business finance, we can alert the HR, or we can alert many, uh, you know, uh, stakeholders in the company that this is uh, wrong, which is happening, can be disciplined. The biggest, and again, I am only talking from a historical data. You know, any new joiner who is joining the company gets a 30 days notice period for his, from his old company uh, to resign and then join the new company. So we have enough time to do the bookings and everything, but we miss it. 
you know uh, i i won't say it's a it's a mistake from a recruiter team or it's a mistake from whoever's team we miss that timeline second important thing uh, we always tend to book a ticket which is uh, you know again i don't want to use the airline name but uh, we we use airlines which doesn't give you uh, much uh, uh, you know uh, the baggage uh, kgs why don't we use air india because anybody who is coming to join you he has a ample time he can choose the you get 25 kgs of uh, you know and these are all small small cost and why i am talking about this cost i can see a lot of participants from uh, admin and travel background for them uh, you know the spend is not huge and, and whenever they will try to bring in any kind of saving in the company it would be in terms of numbers it may be small but i am only talking from a discipline side right from day one when we inculcate discipline into the system a team uh, recruiting a, a manpower or a new employee he has ample time to join team who is booking the ticket uh, can select the airline give him more baggage allowance or more uh, you know the the capacity to bring in otherwise they end up paying extra allowances and and, and all these things get approved for a new joiner everything gets approved and especially with a company where the recruitments are massive you know there are a number of recruitments happening if you really count those uh, small 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 amount it would be a very big amount so all anything which needs to be done on a travel portal needs to be done before the travel takes place because after the travel happened it's only a, a, a you know a mail communication can go to department head that uh, had another thing that you are exceeding your budget can you do something and ultimately it will be justified cfo will approve it and all our these discussion happening will go for a task and then i can share an example from my previous company uh, it was a, a textile industry manufacturing industry and and uh, you know that the, the manufacturing industries in india today also there are there are not many tax savvy people and every uh, text uh, every industries which has uh, you know multiple factories across the country or outside the outside uh, uh, india also everybody likes to work in silos they have their mm -hmm. fiefdom so everybody so there are companies where you will find you know 20 25 travel uh, agencies working can we consolidate can we bring everyone together at one place it will take time uh, it it's a, it's a, it, it will be an effort from it team hr team travel team and finance team to bring that uh, one good company digital company who can bring a lot of ease of doing an operation first three months would be very tough when uh, it happens i think it will happen for good everyone will be happy that's what uh, my take is and, and 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 it was a successful venture which we did in our previous organization interesting um, just at the last i just have one question for farid um, do employees need training to use a digital travel system or is it intuitive enough i think anything that needs training will never be adopted right i think uh, today i don't, like when you buy electronics I don't know how many people even read a manual, right? You you want to play with it and then and then use it. Um, so any platform, if it needs to be adopted and has to be successful, it has to be fairly simple, available. The second thing that we do is a lot of today Gen Z uh, or the millennials like uh, learning on their own pace, right? So you have tutorials or videos which is available to them at their leisure to be doing, it. and it's fairly honestly, it's fairly simple. uh that to be doing and i think one of the things we didn't speak uh, enough and i think swinda spoke about in the beginning is tying up with travel and expense part of it right once we do all of the travel at the part and end part is that you need to expense out all everything that you've done right which is today the biggest challenge any finance person you you probably would uh, uh would say that is their number one problem so you need an integrated platform which is going to help you flow from travel into an expense uh a uh, platform and an easy to use uh, uh something that we prom we know because we travel i know that you are traveling now from your you've done your flight you're going back home that's the one hour i prompt you right saying hey your expense is ready i know your travel ocr is something that's available today with most through your camera putting in uh scanning your bills and putting in right um yeah that's what i wanted to share as well um thank you farid um i'm conscious of time so we'll have to close this round table uh viewers thank you for interacting with us i hope a lot of ground was covered and you found this session insightful and you are walking away with some great takeaways uh thank you amit surendra and farid for joining us today it was wonderful talking to all of you 
uh, we shall meet again for another episode and discuss uh, travel management system. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.